name, Divino Zigbo position, running back school, Nebraska Conference, Big Ten class, senior jersey, no. 22 recruitment rating, 3 star HT, 6 feet 0 inches WT, 220 DOB, the 2nd of October 1996 Rushing 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 receiving 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 scrimmage 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 year school CONF class POS G at yards AVGTD rec yards AVGTD plays yards AVGTD asterisk 2015 Nebraska Big 10 FRRBA 3820955562124343 one asterisk 2016 Nebraska Big Ten so RB9 974124.25 Nebraska Big Ten Junior RB10 million 129,493 3.83 16123.7.7 Nebraska Big Ten Senior RB12 15510827.0 one two two three two zero three eight point eight zero one seven eight one two eight five seven point two twelve career Nebraska four one nine two one nine six five point two two one four nine four eight eight ten point zero four six eight two six eight four five point seven twenty one highlights by the end of the season Ozigbo had rushed for one thousand eighty two yards and twelve touchdowns in twelve games. He became Nebraska's first one thousand yard rusher since Amir Abdullah in twenty fourteen. He also ended with an average of 6.98 yards per carry, which put him at fourth in the Big Ten among players with at least 100 carries. Pros Divino Zigba looks the part of a prototypical NFL running back. He has a well-muscled, thick frame, with a strong lower half. He is a physical runner capable of playing in a power, gap or zone blocking scheme, but probably projects best as a zone runner. Has the skill set to be a three-down player, with starting potential. Low tread on the tires, only 419 career carries at Nebraska. Ozigbo runs with good patience on film, slow to, fast through, which gives his linemen time to secure their blocks. Runs with good power and leg drive but also has nimble feet with the elite ankle flexion that allows him to make quick lateral cuts to evade defenders. Finisher in short yardage situations. Shows good vision. Waits for defenders to commit to their run fits before hitting the cutback lane. Has surprising burst and elusiveness for RB his size. Can be a threat in the passing game both out of the backfield and split out wide. Has shown the ability to run basic root stems when split out wide. Is a solid hands catcher and has shown he can catch passes thrown outside his frame. Quickly goes from receiver to runner and is surprisingly elusive in the open field. His size helps him in pass protection. He has a strong punch and long arms to keep defenders at bay, but also understands how to absorb contact. Ons, one-year wonder. The lack of production at Nebraska might be the biggest concern about Divino Zigbo as a running back prospect. He had to finally transform his body in 2018 to get on the field, but found success once that happened. Can he maintain that kind of discipline in the NFL? There are also concerns about his long speed. As a runner, Ozigbo may be only his own runner in the NFL. Might be scheme dependent. There are times on film where he struggles with his vision, especially when there are multiple offensive linemen pulling. Will also struggle with his reads at time. Better when his reads are clearly defined pre-snap. Takes time to hit top speed and it looks lackadaisical at times. Might take time to adjust to the speed of the game at the next level. In the passing game he has struggled with passes thrown at a high velocity. Has double caught, bubbled, and dropped a number of high velocity passes. This would be an issue, because he doesn't have the softest hands to begin with. Needs to clean up his technique and pass protection. Will telegraph cut blocks, allowing defenders to easily avoid and pressure the quarterback. could stand to become a better route runner to be more of a factor when split out wide as a receiver. Cowboys fit Divino Zigbo is reportedly one of the Dallas Cowboys' 30 pre-draft visitors, suggesting the former Cornhuskers running back is already on their radar.
he would immediately become the RB2 behind Ezekiel Elliott as a rookie and give the Cowboys a formidable one-two punch to wear down opposing defenses. He possesses an intriguing skill set, but isn't the change of pace, got back many have wanted to compliment Zeke in the running game. Ozigbo is a physical runner with a surprisingly nimble feet and flexibility for RB his size. At Nebraska, he was at his best one running inside zone plays, which just so happens to be a staple in the Cowboys zone blocking scheme. He is also a threat as a receiver out of the backfield and a solid pass protector. Overall, he has a three down back and someone who could help lighten the load on Zeke's shoulders. He could be a steal for the Cowboys on day three, which is where he is projected to be drafted. The Dallas Cowboys have done an outstanding job of filling holes with some cost-effective free agents so far in free agency, which should allow them to approach the 2019 NFL Draft without any glaring needs. This should free them up to take the best player available if they so choose, but they still have to keep the future in mind as well. After all, there are several players on a one-year deal or entering the last year of their contracts. For this seven-round Dallas Cowboys mock draft exercise I decided to use the mock draft simulators for Draft Network and Fanspeak. I was curious to see the difference, if any, between the two. I have to say, even though I used two different draft simulators, I was pretty happy with the way things turned out. Let's take a look. Road 2, 58, D, Christian Miller, D, Christian Miller, Road 3, 90, DT, Tristan Hill South, Amani, Hooker, Road 4, 128, OT, Bobby Evans, Tate, Kahale, Waring, Road 4, 136, S, Marchese Blair, RB, Rodney Anderson, Road 5, 165, WR, Jalen Hurd, DT, Michael Dog Bay, Road 7, 241, RB, James Williams, WR, Cody Thompson, even though I used two different draft simulators, you can clearly see the positions I was targeting for the Dallas Cowboys. I think each one of these players I selected can challenge for a starting job in 2019, but at the worst can be solid depth this year and then become starters in 2020. Let's dive into this a little deeper so I can tell you why I selected each one of these players. Second round 58th overall, Christian Miller is the only player I drafted in both mock drafts for the Dallas Cowboys. He is one of my pet cats this year and someone who I believe fits the criteria the Cowboys look for in their defensive ends. I believe he could challenge to be a starter as a rookie, but at worst would be a really good rotational piece with starting potential down the road. Third round 90th overall, Tristan Hill is a penetrating DT who could challenge Maliak Collins to become the starting three technique as a rookie, but at the very least be a really good rotational piece with starting potential. Amani Hooker is someone who I believe could start next to Xavier Woods as a rookie, even after the Dallas Cowboys added George Aloka to the mix. Fourth round, 128th overall, Bobby Evans has the ability to play the left or right tackle position in the NFL and could immediately challenge Leo Collins at RT. At worst, he would be Collins' replacement in 2020. Sitting behind Jason Witten and learning for a season would be ideal for Kahale Waring, because he does have the potential to become the Dallas Cowboys TE1 in 2020 despite his lack of college production. Fourth round, 136th overall, Marchese Blair is an underrated safety in the 2019 draft class and someone who would also pair nicely with Xavier Woods. He played mostly strong safety at Utah, but has the ability to be a factor in coverage as well. Rodney Anderson would immediately step in and become Ezekiel Elliott's backup as a rookie. He is an upgrade over Rod Smith and has starting potential if he can stay healthy. 5th round, 165th overall. Despite signing Randall Cobb, the Dallas Cowboys could use a slot receiver for the future. I personally really like Jalen Hurd as a big slot. He gives the Cowboys some size at the WR position and a big target for Dak Prescott to throw to in the slot. Michael Dog Bay is another potential three technique with starting potential for the Cowboys. He'd likely be a rotational player as a rookie, but could take over for Maliak Collins in 2020. 
7th round, 254th overall, James Williams would bring an intriguing skill set to the Dallas Cowboys as Zeke's backup running back. He is arguably the best receiving RB in the entire draft out of the backfield and when split out wide like a WR. Cody Thompson reminds me of LA Rams WR Cooper Cup and would play a similar role with the Cowboys. He needs to fine-tune his route running, but I think he can become their future slot receiver. Tight end has become a very intriguing position in Dallas. For the first time in 15 years, the Cowboys went through a season without Jason Witten lining up with the offense in 2018. Instead, Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz took over and didn't contribute much to a struggling offense. They both had a few flashes here and there, but Tay production wasn't really special for the Cowboys last season. Now, Witten is back from retirement and he'll work with the younger guys to upgrade the offense. However, tight end still feels like a team need at this point. Jason Witten will be 37 years old when the season begins. His speed was a problem during the last years of his career and that problem will likely show on the field now that he's back. The Cowboys made a good decision bringing him back, but he's clearly not a long-term answer. Dallas Cowboys Tay Jason Witten, James D. Smith Dallas Cowboys. It seems like Witten will get the starts, but don't expect Blake Jarwin to have no say on who's the most important Tay on the team. Jarwin didn't have the best stats in 2018 but, how could he? There were only three games last season in which he was targeted more than three times. In those games, he had 229 yards, including a three-touchdown performance versus the New York Giants, when he was targeted eight times. With Kellen Moore taking over as the offensive coordinator, tight ends might be more involved on the Cowboys' offense than in previous years. That's the case, the Cowboys will have Jason Witten, Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz on the roster. All three of these guys will be able to contribute. Schultz is the one who's still unproven, but he did a decent job as a rookie both as a blocker and as a receiver on the rare occasions a ball was thrown his way. We talk about drafting a tight end for the future when the Cowboys might see their future in Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz. These two along with Jason Witten are virtual locks to make the roster. The Cowboys would need to carry four tight ends for it to make sense to draft one in the first place. Fortunately, the Cowboys have done something at pretty much every position of need this offseason, giving them flexibility to take a best player available in April. I truly won't be surprised if the front office doesn't prioritize the need for a young Tay. If they do, let's hope they get a very good one. It seemed as if defensive end wouldn't be a concern for the Dallas Cowboys in 2019. Demarcus Lawrence did an amazing job last season keeping up his level of play and making a statement on why he's one of the best defensive players in the NFL. Randy Gregory had a tremendous comeback season with six sacks in only 14 games. It felt like the Cowboys didn't have to worry about the position this offseason, unfortunately, Randy Gregory received an indefinite suspension by the NFL for violating the league's policy and in program for substance abuse. The 26-year-old defensive end had just been reinstated prior to the season after sitting out most of his career. Now the Cowboys are in search of a defensive end to play opposite of Demarcus Lawrence, who by the way, has yet to reach an agreement with the team for a long-term deal, who's reached elite status after the last couple of seasons. Often, the positions that come to mind when discussing the team's current needs are defensive tackle, safety and before the front office signed Randall Cobb, wide receiver. However, I'm convinced defensive end is right up there and I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys draft one in the second round with the 58th overall pick. Of course, the focus right now seems to be in trading for Miami Dolphins to Robert Quinn. I honestly believe that'd be a great move by the Cowboys front office. Quinn will be 29 years old when the season begins and he still has a ton of gas left in the tank. In the past two seasons he's racked up 15 sacks and four forced fumbles. 
he'll be a good pass rusher for whoever he plays with once the season begins. If a trade for Quinn doesn't take place and the team fails to upgrade the position via free agency, defensive end should be considered a top priority in the 2019 NFL Draft. They're bound to be quality prospects when the Cowboys get in the clock for the first time in April. Right now the defense counts with Durant Armstrong, Taco Charlton, Tyrone Crawford who is currently under investigation by the NFL after getting in trouble at a bar to take care of the position. Add to the mix recently signed free agents Christian Covington and Kerry Hyder, two players who could end up playing in the interior as well. The team definitely needs some additional help. When push comes to shove, the team is deep along the defensive line. What the Cowboys are missing are guys who can be unquestioned starters instead of rotational players. As all eyes lay on a possible trade for Robert Quinn, keep an eye out for a defensive end name being called by the commissioner when the Cowboys make the 58th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft.